I want you to think about a great book or a great movie that you've read recently. What made it so good? Maybe it was scary, maybe it was funny, maybe it was sad. Whatever it is, my hunch is the reason you loved it so much was because it was a great story. There's just something about a great story, well told, that causes us to stop, to listen, and to think. Maybe that's why Jesus spent a third of his teaching telling stories called parables. Now, the word parable comes from the Greek word parabole, which means comparison. It's simple, really. It's a story that compares two or more ideas using metaphor, using everyday examples to teach some type of moral lesson. This is why Jesus loved parables, because they were short, quick, easy to get stories that taught deep, eternal truth. Jesus' examples came right out of the everyday life he lived in, first century Galilee and the surrounding areas. The examples he used are a far cry from the 21st century world we live in today. You know, most of Jesus' listeners were farmers while we live in the cities and suburbs. I mean, think about it. When was the last time you saw some sheep and goats walking down your street? Or when was the last time you saw a farmer sowing seed in the field by hand? Because we're not familiar with these first century experiences, it's easy for us to misunderstand the true meaning of these parables. Since a third of Jesus' teaching was done in parables, it's vitally important for us to understand the context from which they come if we're going to have an application for our lives today. Over the next six weeks, we're going to hear some great stories on joy, power, discovery, wealth, as we hear some of the most important teaching Jesus gave us on the kingdom of God and our place within it. And while these parables are great examples of stories well told, there's so much more than that. They're an invitation from Jesus to hear and obey. An invitation for us to live life within the kingdom, life the way he intended us to live it.